Just say to Western people that um, let the fire burn, it'll go out. These young men who are radical or extremist and uh, shouting and reacting, they're going to get older. And as they get older, the fire goes down. Okay, and, uh, and I think that uh, there's, there's a, another side, especially in America, um, um, I, I'm witnessing a, a tremendous amount of young people that are very educated, um, very moderate, and we don't have any radical mosques in America. We don't have this problem in America. It's a phenomenon of Europe. And I think it's a phenomenon of Europe because uh, the Europeans haven't dealt with it properly. Uh, the Americans have allowed uh, or have uh, promoted uh, people to um, migrate into the society like a melting pot. And you don't find this, this anger. You don't find this. Uh, but you find people who have been in America for a year or two. If you ask them, are you an American? Of course I'm an American. But you find people who have been here in Europe for three generations and they don't want to call themselves Dutch or they don't want to call themselves British. Um, I think that um, the society itself, the hosting society, um, I don't think that they're approaching the problem correctly. 20 minutes, I think, I'm going to be up. We're going to the um, Delft Technical University. I think that's where we're going. Well, I think that um, the students here, like many students, um, uh, around the world, especially in the Western civilizations. Uh, they're trying to reconcile uh, their ideological values and their academic aspirations and how they're going to merge the two of those together. Many of these uh, young people are a bit frustrated and uh, uh, despondent uh, to a certain degree, and uh, I'm sort of like the uh, Ghostbuster. It is important for them to understand who they are uh, and the values of their uh, um, uh, religion or their system of life, but it's more important for them to understand where they are. I'm reminding them, this is Holland. And, uh, and you, uh, your parents, by the way, they're not going back anywhere. As I understand it, uh, our discussion today is about participation in the society. Uh, many uh, of our classical scholars and students of knowledge who have studied with them uh, are of the opinion that it is irreligious for Muslims to participate uh, in a non-Muslim society. Now, not only uh, am I going to demonstrate that that is preposterous, but I'm also, also going to show that it is an un-Islamic postulate. That is, we must participate in the society. Not doing so, we will be blameworthy in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I would ask, I want it to be a little interactive here. I want to ask how many people here can honestly say, as a Muslim living in this country, how many people took the time to extract the constitution of this country, take it home, and look at those 15, 20, 30, or whatever pages it is, and try to understand the constitutionality and the social political persona of this country in terms of its values, its principles. How many of you can say that you did that? 
If you don't participate, you will never be empowered. It is as simple as that. If you don't participate, how can you yourself be elected? How can you be appointed? How can you be consulted if you're not participating? I didn't say Muslims should run for office. I don't want anybody here to say that uh, Sheikh Khalid Yassin said that. I didn't say that. If that's your ambition, there is a, uh, there is a different fatawa that's been established where a Muslim can run for office in this society or another given society. Well, we should participate in the society to the extent that the society allows us, you see, to plant and to cultivate and to generate the Islamic values inside of that society, we should go as far as we can to do that. Why? Because the society has provided us the privilege and the opportunity to do that. And thank you, brother, so much. Thank you. I happen to be a Muslim, so the moral values, you see, the moral values that drive my views are Islam. But I'm not a person preaching about Islam, calling people to Islam. That's not my ambition. I was born a Christian, so religion and Jesus Christ in particular was a very much uh, part of my life. I was raised in foster homes, so kind of being shifted and farmed out to different um, uh, Christian families. And having been exposed to the morality of Christianity in, in its various denominations. When I arrived at um, the higher part of my adolescence, uh, this was the turbulent 60s. The word Islam was in the news. There was a group of people called the Nation of Islam. On one particular occasion, I was riding the train, I can remember, and uh, there was an article in the New York Times. That article in the New York Times was a letter written by the person uh, better known as uh, Malcolm X about his experience in Mecca. In the will of Allah by protecting a man who I myself taught them was... We can uh, see that he has grown a beard. Uh, so this must have been around November or December of 1964. And of course, he was assassinated in February of 1965. He teaches us to obey the law, to respect law enforcement officers as long as these law enforcement officers respect themselves. We're nonviolent with people who are nonviolent with us, but we are not nonviolent with anyone who is violent with us. The Negro or the African American as I was, it wasn't difficult to relate to this new morality. It's already there in scripture. It's being articulated now a different way. Mm. So for me, the first time I heard Malcolm, I just heard a person who's, who was like fearless and articulate. Not just a fearless, but articulate. Um, uh, entertaining, meaning that he was humorous. Of course, Malcolm is saying that America doesn't want us here because that's, we're the problem. Well, I think maybe uh, Muslims in Europe uh, maybe thinking that the Europeans don't want us here, uh, but that it's a difference. Those who are feeling that Europe doesn't want them there, they may themselves be u quite European, or they may be the second and third generation of immigrants. Um, and so they're feeling rejection from Europe, like African Americans were feeling rejection from America. Uh, rejection for different reasons. Uh, but I think, again, 
Malcolm uh, is being very visionary in that he's starting out by saying that the way to avert clash, um, uh, convulsion, uh, is to have open dialogue. These young children of Muslim immigrants in Europe, they're going to the mosque, some of them from their own motivation, others because it's just uh, expected of them. But when they get there, they don't find the voice. They hear people talking classical, whether Arabic or Urdu or some other language, and they're respecting it, but they're not, as the young kid says, I ain't feeling it. I ain't with that. That's the language. Okay, so... Um, here you see, start to see them going a different way. <clears throat> uh, I think that the voice of a person like Malcolm, um, if you just listen to it and don't look at it, uh, a young um, Moroccan or Algerian or um, Somalian or um, from Ghana or Nigerian or Bosnian or whatever, young Muslim, whether in America or in Europe, they can relate almost immediately to that message. I, I think the main reason is that these young people were looking for something to liberate them, to give them a new identity. Uh, we zijn nu in Hoboken. Uh, wat is er aan de hand? Uh, er is een hoofdzoekverbod ingediend. Uh, het is 